laws. We have so much to get to, Senator. Those laws have been on the books since 1990. Thank you, gentlemen. The CBP one app has not been on the books since 1990. Gentlemen, the audience can't hear you because your mics are cut. This was a threat to our democracy in a way that we had not seen. And it manifested itself because of Donald Trump's inability to say. He is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to, that is a damning non-answer. Has she? It's a damning non-answer for you to not talk about censorship. Obviously, Donald Trump and I think that there were problems in 2020. We've talked about it. I'm happy to talk about it further. But you guys attack us for not believing in democracy. The most sacred right under the United States democracy is the First Amendment. You yourself have said there's no First Amendment right to misinformation. Kamala Harris wants to no use the power of speech. government and big tech to silence people from speaking their minds. That is a threat to democracy that will long outlive this present political moment. I would like Democrats and Republicans to both reject censorship. Let's persuade one another. Let's argue about ideas and then let's come together afterwards. Donald Trump had four years. He had four years to do this. And he promised you, America, how easy it would be. I'll build you a big, beautiful wall, and Mexico will pay for it. Less than 2% of that wall got built, and Mexico didn't pay a dime. But here we are again, nine years after he came down that escalator, dehumanizing people. You've got schools that are overwhelmed. You've got hospitals that are overwhelmed. You've got housing that is totally unaffordable because we brought in millions of illegal immigrants to compete with Americans for scarce homes. The people that I'm most worried about in Springfield, Ohio, are the American citizens who have had their lives destroyed by Kamala Harris's open border. The issue on this is this is what happens when you don't want to solve it. You demonize it. And we saw this. And, and Senator Vance, and it surprises me on this, talking about and saying, I will create stories to bring attention to this. That vilified a large number of people who were here legally in the community of Springfield. The Republican governor said, it's not true. Don't do it. There's consequences for this. There's consequences. We could come together. Senator Langford did it. We could come together and solve this if we didn't let Donald Trump continue to make it an issue. And the consequences in Springfield were the governor had to send state law enforcement to escort kindergartners to school. I believe Senator Vance wants to solve this, but by standing with Donald Trump and not working together to find a solution, it becomes a talking point. And when it becomes a talking point like this, we dehumanize and villainize other human beings. Now, to answer this particular question, we have to remember that as much as Governor Waltz just accused Donald Trump of being an agent of chaos, Donald Trump actually delivered stability in the world, and he did it by establishing effective deterrence. People were afraid of stepping out of line. Iran, which launched this attack, has received over $100 billion in unfrozen assets thanks to the Kamala Harris administration. Governor Waltz, you blame Donald Trump. Who has been the vice president for the last three and a half years? And the answer is your running mate, not mine. Donald Trump consistently made the world more secure. Now, we talk about what the, the, the sequence of events that led us to where we are right now, and you can't ignore October the 7th, which I appreciate Governor Waltz bringing up. But when did Iran and Hamas and their proxies attack Israel? It was during the administration of Kamala Harris. Thank you, Governor. And just to clarify for our viewers, Springfield, Ohio does have a large number of Haitian migrants who have legal status temporary protected status. Well, Mar Mar Nora, Margaret, but, but thank you. No, Senator, no, we have no, no, so course. much to get to. Margaret, thank I, I you, think Mara. it's important the, because... We're going to turn out of the, the debate, economy. Thank Margaret, you. Margaret, the, the, the rules were that the you economy, guys weren't going to fact check. And since you're fact checking me, I think it's important to say what's actually going on. So there's an application called the CBP One app where you can go on as an illegal migrant, apply for asylum or apply for parole and be granted legal status at the wave of a Kamala Harris open border wand. That is not a person coming in, applying for a green card and waiting for 10 years. That Thank is you, the Senator. facilitation of illegal immigration, Margaret, by Thank our Thank you, own Senator, for leadership. describing the legal and process. And Kamala, we and have Kamala so Harris much to get to, that Senator. Pathway. Those we laws have, so have been much... on the books since 1990. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, the the we CBP have... one app has not been on the books it's since 1990. It's something that Kamala Harris created, Margaret. Gentlemen, you're... The audience can't hear you because your mics are cut. 
We have so much we want to get to. Thank you for explaining the legal process. Before we talk about deportations, we have to stop the bleeding. We have a historic immigration crisis because Kamala Harris started and said that she wanted to undo all of Donald Trump's border policies. 94 executive orders suspending deportations, decriminalizing illegal aliens, uh, massively increasing the asylum fraud that exists in our system. That has opened the floodgates. And what it's meant is that a lot of fentanyl is coming into our our country. I had a mother who struggled with opioid addiction and has gotten clean. I don't want people who are struggling with addiction to be deprived of their second chance because Kamala Harris led in fentanyl into our communities at record levels. So you've got to stop the bleeding. You've got to re-implement Donald Trump's border policies, build the wall, re-implement deportations. And that gets me to your point, Margaret, about what do we actually do? So we've got 20, 25 million illegal aliens who are here in the country. What do we do with them? I think the first thing that we do is we start with the criminal migrants. About a million of those people have committed some form of crime in addition to crossing the border illegally. I think you start with deportations on those folks. And then I think you make it harder for illegal aliens to undercut the wages of American workers. A lot of people will go home if they can't work for less than minimum wage in our own country. And by the way, that'll be really good for our workers who just want to earn a fair wage for doing a good day's work. And the final point, Margaret, is you ask about family separation. Right now, in this country, Margaret, we have 320,000 children that the Department of Homeland Security has effectively lost. Some of them have been sex trafficked. Some of them hopefully are at homes with their families. Some of them have been used as drug trafficking mules. The real family separation policy in this country is unfortunately Kamala Harris's wide open southern border. And I'd ask my fellow Americans to remember when she came into office, she said she was going to do this. Real leadership would be saying, you know what? I screwed up. We're going to go back to Donald Trump's border policies. I wish that she would do that. It would be good for all of us.